Hello all and welcome back. In this video, we are going to cover RDS Multi-AZ DB Cluster Deployment and its failover, followed by a quick demo. Amazon RDS Multi-AZ Deployment provides high availability, durability, and automatic failover support. Multi-AZ helps improve the durability and availability of a critical system, enhancing availability during planned system maintenance, DB instance failover, and availability zone disruption. RDS currently supports two kinds of multi-AZ deployments, multi-AZ DB instance deployment and multi-AZ DB cluster deployment. A multi-AZ DB cluster deployment is a semi-synchronous high availability deployment mode where it creates two additional readable standby DB instances. A multi-AZ DB cluster has a writer DB instance and two reader DB instances placed in three separate AZ in the same AWS region. RDS Multi-AZ DB Cluster replicates the data from the Writer DB instance to both of the Reader DB instances using the DB Engine's native replication capabilities. Multi-AZ DB Cluster deployments use semi-synchronous replication, which requires acknowledgement from at least one Reader DB instance in order for the change to be committed. Reader DB instances act as an automatic failover target and also serve read traffic to increase application read throughput. In an event of an outage on the Writer DB instance, RDS manages failover to one of the Reader DB instances with the most recent change record. Multi-AZ DB clusters typically have a lower write latency when compared to a multi-AZ DB instance deployment as it does not perform a synchronous replication to a standby instance. Multi-AZ DB cluster provides increased capacity for read workloads as well, allowing read-only workloads to run on reader DB instances. However, multi-AZ DB cluster also have lot of limitations. Multi-AZ DB clusters are currently supported only for the MySQL and PostgreSQL DB engines. It also only supports provision IOPS storage and you cannot use general purpose storage. Single AZ DB instance deployment or a multi-AZ DB instance deployment cannot be upgraded into the multi-AZ DB cluster deployment. Multi-AZ DB clusters also don't support modifications at the DB instance level, as all modifications should be done at the DB cluster level. There are a lot of other features as well, which the multi-AZ DB cluster does not support like support for IPv6 connections, cross-region automated backups, IMDB authentication, Kerberos authentication, modifying the default port, option groups, point-in-time recovery, restoring a multi-AZDB cluster snapshot from S3, storage auto-scaling, However, you can manually scale the storage. Stopping and starting the DB cluster, copying a snapshot of a multi-AZ DB cluster, and encrypting an unencrypted multi-AZ DB cluster. In this demo, we would be creating a multi-AZ DB cluster by choosing multi-AZ DB cluster in the availability and durability section. 
Let's navigate to the RDS console. We already have a subnet group created named RDS Demo Subnet Group. This subnet group spans across three AZs, US East 1, A, B and C. Let's navigate back to the databases. Choose Create Database. We will use the standard Create option to create the multi-AZ DB cluster as it gives us more control over the configuration. Multi-AZ DB clusters are supported only for MySQL and PostgreSQL DB engines. In the engine type, let's choose MySQL. We will leave the addition and version as the default. In the templates, you can either choose the production or dev test template for the deployment. Production defaults to the multi AZ DB cluster, while the dev test will default to a single DB instance. Let's choose the dev test template. In availability and durability, choose multi AZ DB cluster. The multi AZ DB cluster creates a DB cluster with a primary DB instance and two readable standby DB instances with each DB instance in a different AZ within the same region. Let's quickly cover the other configurations. DB instance as database 1, master username admin, we do not need secrets manager. Let's enter master password and confirm the master password. Let's move to the instance configuration and storage. For DB instance class, you won't be able to select the burstable classes. Let's check for large instance classes and select M class large instance class for this demo, which is also the lowest configuration. Multi-AZ DB clusters currently support only provisioned IOPS storage and you will not see the general purpose SSD storage as the listed option. Let's use the minimum 100 GB of storage. We'll keep the baseline IOPS to 3000 IOPS. Multi-AZ DB cluster currently does not support the storage autoscaling feature as well. However, you can perform manual scaling. In terms of connectivity, let's keep it don't connect to an EC2 compute resource. Let's change the VPC from default to our custom VPC VPCA. For multi AZDB clusters, VPC subnets must be in three different availability zones. DB subnet group is set to RDS demo subnet group, which we have already created. It spans across three AZs, US East 1A, B and C. Choose public accessibility and this will allocate an IP address for your database instance so that you can directly connect to the database from your own device. However, note, it is recommended to host your database in private subnets with public accessibility disabled. For VPC security groups, we will leave it the default VPC security group, which allows all inbound and outbound traffic. Leave the RDS proxy in the unchecked state. Default certificate authority is fine to help use SSL or TLS with our applications. Additional configuration has the port and let's leave it to default 3306. For database authentication, RDS supports password, Kerberos and IAM database authentication to authenticate database users. Let's stick to the password based authentication. For monitoring, 
Let's turn off the performance insights and leave the enhanced monitoring disabled as well. For the additional configuration, Multi-AZDB cluster does not support initial database name and option groups. Default parameter group is fine. Disable the automatic backups for the database. Encryption with the default RDS KMS key is fine as well. Log exports unchecked. Auto minor version upgrade checked. No preference for the maintenance window. And let's leave the deletion protection unchecked as well. You can review your monthly costs. However, note DB cluster cannot be created in the free tier and it's going to cost you. Let's go ahead and choose create database. The multi AZ DB cluster would take some time from provisioning. Let's wait for it to be available. The status for the DB changes from creating to modifying and then available. Three reader instances are being created, one in each AZ, and one of the reader instance would be promoted to a writer instance. The instance one has now been modified from a reader instance to a writer instance. The writer instance is now in the available status. All the writer and reader instances are also now in the available status. Let's wait for the database one cluster to be available as well. RDS multi AZ DB cluster is now in the available state. Let's check the DB cluster configurations. In terms of connectivity and security, RDS multi AZ cluster provides separate reader and writer endpoints. Cluster or writer endpoint connects to the writer DB instance of the DB cluster, which supports both read and write operations. Reader endpoint connects to either of the two reader DB instances, which only support read operations. You can also use an instance endpoint which connects to the specific DB instance within a multi AZ DB cluster. Let's navigate to the logs and events to check on the events. Logs and events don't show much data for the DB cluster, it just mentions DB cluster created. Let's navigate back to the configurations. And you would see multi AZ is set to three availability zones. RDS automatically fails over to the reader DB instance in a different AZ in case of a planned or an unplanned outage of the writer DB instance. It is done as quickly as possible without any administrative intervention required. Failover time will depend on the database activity and other conditions when the writer DB instance became unavailable and it typically ranges around 35 to 45 seconds. Failover completes when both reader DB instances have applied outstanding transactions from the failed writer. A manual failover of the DB cluster can also be initiated using the failover option, which is also referred to as a forced failover. Now that the RDS multi AZ DB cluster has been created, let's deep dive into its failover. RDS provides you an option to simulate the high availability with the writer instance failure by offering the option of forced failover. 
This option will initiate rider instance failure and one of the reader instances would be promoted to be the writer instance. From the actions option, let's select the failover option. Let's go ahead with the failover option. The process will take some time, but for our DB size and activity, it should be done within a minute. The DB cluster is in the failing over status. And you can see the switch has happened. The instance 1 is now the reader instance, while the instance 2 is now promoted to the writer instance. The failover has been completed and the database is now available. If you check the connectivity and security settings, both the reader and the writer endpoints remain the same and do not change, allowing the applications to work without any changes. Let's check the events as well. And it shows the multi AZDB cluster failover completed with instance 2. So that's it for the RDS multi AZDB cluster demo, where we created a multi AZDB cluster and performed a manual failover. I hope you liked the demo. Thank you all. All right, that was it. Thank you for watching. You can check out my website and connect me on LinkedIn and Twitter. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. For any feedback, please leave a comment down below. To see more videos like this in the future, hit the subscribe button. Thank you.